Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Betrayal is one of the worst of all human experiences. It happens when someone presents themselves as being trustworthy, like unto a friend. Fortunately, as will become plainly evident with those who do the betraying, they are anything but honest and well-intentioned. Betrayers claim to be one thing in word and deed, but will reveal themselves in due course to be the exact opposite. And sadly, the betrayer acts not with a view to loving and serving the neighbor, but out of self-interest, especially at the expense of others. I suspect that most of us here this evening could recount times in our lives when we were hurt by someone who betrayed us. Maybe there's a childhood memory of a so-called friend we had put our trust in, and then later they did something to, say, damage our reputation. Oftentimes, these sorts of things can happen in the workplace, where we might put our trust in a coworker only to find out that they really care about climbing the corporate ladder and not about anybody else at all. Even worse, the closer the betrayer is to us, the greater the pain they cause, which is why things like marital infidelity are so agonizing. When the person we are supposed to love the most inflicts a wound like no other. Our Lord Jesus knows what it is like to be betrayed too. He himself had those whom he loved in his life, who were close to him. That was certainly the case for the disciples. He could have chosen anyone in the world, but he chose the twelve. Each hand selected to travel with him, listen to him teach and preach, watch his miracles and signs. One would think that out of all the people who would have loved the king come to them, it would have been the disciples. What more could they have asked for? They saw the dead raised, the mute speak, even demons be driven out. The hearts of sinful men are evil all the time. Our Lord had even told the disciples that it was necessary for him to be betrayed and handed over unto death. Unlike us who are so often taken by surprise at the hand of our betrayers, Jesus knew what was to come. He knew, as he had foretold them, that they would all abandon him. And yet how painful it must have been. He cared for those men and had given them the things of God. But when it came time to choose their own lives or his, they were unwilling to go with him to the cross. And they left him and fled. To make matters worse, this wasn't any ordinary betrayal either. For Jesus had been plotted against. Those who should have been citizens of his kingdom, who should have been willing to lay down their lives for him. It is they, particularly Judas, who schemed against him. Maybe it was the offer of money that was too great to pass up. Perhaps he was just frustrated that the kingdom of God had not come into the world in the way that he had expected. But whatever it may have been, it is certain that like with all betrayers, Satan had entered his heart to do what not be done. And so in the garden, Judas brought with him a great crowd armed for conflict. And he devised a plan about how we would hand over Jesus. He would take the sign of peace, a kiss, and use it to identify his Lord. What is normally reserved as a sign of great affection and fealty, he turned into a means of malice. Though appearing to be a friend of Jesus, he came to destroy him. He came to have his king captured. For Jesus' part, he greets Judas without hostility or animus. He calls him a friend and tells him to simply finish what he has started. And the truth is that Jesus does treat him as a friend. He does not berate him. He does not fight him. He walks with him still because he loves him even though Judas is going to betray him. And at that moment, with that sign of peace, they seize him. 
Jesus knew what was going to happen. But how dreadful it must have been to be betrayed by a friend. Unlike us, Jesus never did any wrong to anyone, including his disciples. He taught honestly, dealt charitably with all, and cared for all. In many ways, Jesus did not know anyone a stranger. Even the Pharisees, scribes, and priests, he was always willing to deal with them truthfully and honestly, even though they hated him. We can even see it in the betrayal when Peter cuts off the servant's ear. Jesus does not tell his disciples to strike down his betrayer or murder those come to unjustly arrest him. Instead, he loves those who have come to do him harm. He takes the servant and heals his ear and he bids his disciples not to make war by the sword. But all these things must take place so that the scriptures be fulfilled. And at that, the disciples flee. Afraid for their lives because they do not want to be arrested and crucified. In their own self-interest, they preserve their lives. But not Jesus. He has not come to escape his betrayer, but to be handed into his hands. Jesus accepts the faith that the Father has for him. It is not suffering that he has come to escape, but rather that he must undergo because everyone in the world but him would flee. Our Lord came not to save his own life, but to fulfill the word of God by handing it over. It is for this purpose that our Lord came down from heaven, and it is for this reason that he would also return. Our lives cannot actually be preserved in the world by escaping betrayal and by running from death. Since Christ knows these things to be true, he himself takes up the suffering that the disciples and all others will not. He elects to go to the cross, the place of death, because he does not want to avoid what the hearts of all people fear. Christ has come so that in his betrayal, he might show what a great king he is. Like the true good king, Christ has come to serve the people of his kingdom no matter what the cost. And the people for whom he has come, well, they and we would all die in our sins unless the righteousness of God might come through him. That curse of the law that says those who commit sin must die, that word must be fulfilled for God does not lie. That is exactly what must happen. Like a good king, Jesus is going to battle on behalf of his people. But the battle isn't with clubs or swords. It is the righteous life of Christ against the unrighteous lives of the world. And so Jesus allows himself to be handed over. These same brigands who would have come out, well, they could have taken him openly in the temple when he taught the word of God and its truth and purity. But they've waited so that no one is around. So the evil of their deeds could not be spoken of. And to the cross, our Lord will now go. He will go to the place of death in order to fulfill the promise of God that life will be taken as a payment for sin. That was all a part of God's plan. This betrayal, though evil in and of itself, yet is it something through which God will work ultimate good. Even something so horrible as a betrayal can yet be used by our Lord for his salvific work in the world. That's why Jesus, he doesn't run. He accepts it as the will of God for him. And through this act, he will die. And in his death will come the meriting of the forgiveness of the sins of all. We are saved by a king who is betrayed. So great is his love for us. All of this reminds us that our Lord will work through those unfortunate and sorry circumstances to accomplish his will. First, in the life and death of our Lord, out of which is the gift of eternal life, but also as he works in our lives, as we face times of hardship and maybe even betrayal. Then, it is in Christ that we are to look, in our times of need, in our times of hurt, even in the midst of our own sin. For Christ is betrayed to save sinners 
who have sinned against us and to save us who have sinned against others. He will never be unfaithful or do what is in his own self-interest. He is the greatest king of all who loves his servants enough to die for them even when they betray him. And all this gladly done so that we sinners might be saved from the death we deserve and yet so that we might pass unto life with our Lord who has triumphed even over death and betrayal. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us